got to tell you this before I continue. Um, I've never seen a UFO fly, so I don't know what I can uh, uh, relate to a lot of uh, UFO stories because a lot of people seen them flying and doing things. I've never seen them fly. I've been in them. I've seen it fly from the inside, but I couldn't tell you what they look like, like outside, you know what I mean? I don't know. So just want to let you know that part, and I'm also probably the biggest skeptic in the world on this topic because uh, I've been through it. So I hear all these stories about this stuff and this and this, and sometimes it's not that I'm a believer. Sometimes it's just I, I can't relate. I, I, I didn't see that. So... And some of them just say you're crazy, you know, you're lying. Most of them are, I hate to say. But uh, some of them blow me away. But uh, it's actually about a UFO abduction story. True story. Uh, basically, I just want to get straight to the story, get it over with, post it, see what happens. Uh, myself, I'm a little bit different. Um, I don't even know why I'm doing this. I really don't care if people believe it or not or whatever, but it's bugging the hell out of me. So, uh, this is sort of the story. Um, take you for what it's worth. Believe it or not, I really don't give a damn. Um, anyway, uh, it was like a early 89, I believe. At my job at the time, I had, I had to be at work like that. Shoot, 5.30 in the morning. I hated it. But anyway, uh, so I always made sure I was in bed by 8 o'clock. I was usually asleep by 8.30 because I had to wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning every morning, Monday through, no, Tuesday through, like, Sunday. Uh, this is kind of how the story begins. Well, now, like I said, uh, I was asleep by 8 o'clock. And um, so... I'm telling you that because I don't know what time it was. I don't know when this happened during the night. The path was there for me. It was an opportunity for them and it happened. So, uh, well, like I said, I'm asleep. I'm out, cold, whatever, like every other night. And um, I'm, I, I hear all these dogs barking, like a lot of them. And um, they just woke me up from my sleep. And, you know, uh, coming straight from sleep and not really realizing, but we live in apartments and we didn't have any pets. We didn't have no backyard or anything like that. So I was, like, kind of shocked when I woke up. I opened my eyes and um, I said, wow, you know, we don't have dogs or anything because they were loud. And anyway, uh, I woke up and I'm walking down the street. Um, and I'm, as I woke up, you know, you would think you would wake up and uh, stop and figure things out. You would wonder where the hell you out. I, I couldn't do nothing, nothing like that. In my mind, I was. I was like, what the hell? I found out that the dogs that woke me up were barking at my ass. They were, they were barking at me walking down the middle of the street in the middle of the night. So that, that was the very first thing that tripped me out. And then I couldn't control anything. I was... I was just on a ride, basically, and the only thing I could use was my eyeballs. And throughout this whole abduction thing, I uh, I wake up and go back out. I pass out or whatever. I don't just stop remembering shit. And um, then something will wake me up, and then I'll be in a certain situation. So the first thing that woke me up were the dogs barking, barking, barking at me. And um, Wow, the next next thing is still kind of crazy. So uh, I'm walking down this this block. This my block. I never walk anywhere, I man. I got I was driving. I mean, I drive around the corner to go to the store. I was lazy, basically. But I'm walking down the street. No street lights on the street. Every, every dog barking at me. So I get to this busy street. It's, but there's no car. Just like obviously very late or in the middle of the night, or something or early in the morning. And so I'm walking, and I uh, I black out a little bit here too. So the next thing I remember is walking over this little bridge we have in up, up, on my block, on my main block in, in my neighborhood. And it, uh, it was just a little bridge going over a creek into some bike trail areas, which are uh, 
they were like a nature preserve, so they never did anything. It was always wooded. So there was a stream there, um, just, you know, animals was all in there and whatever. But it was a bike trail area, so, you know, if you want to ride your bike, you can go there in the daytime. You're a fool if you're doing it at 3 in the morning, but that's just me. Anyway, uh, so I'm walking over the bridge, and again, I don't know what's going on right now. I don't know what the hell. Uh, no clue. So anyway, let's get to it. I'm, I'm, I'm walking, and uh, it's funny because I, uh, I bent down on one knee, and had my other hand, um, two hands on my other knee, kind of like, uh, I don't know, just on one knee with one hand kind of looking, posing for a funny-ass picture. So I was tripping off myself for doing that. I was like, this is stupid. What are you doing? I just stopped, bent down on one knee, put two hands on my other knee. And I was kind of like looking around with my eyes because I didn't know what the fuck I was doing, man. I like, it looks like I'm posing for a funny picture. But then I look straight, and through the trees, um, it was like, you know, if there's like five trees in front of you, you can still see the other side through these little paths or whatever, even though it's through two trees. But I saw, it was like a, a perfect little vision that I could see through the trees. It was a ball-shaped craft, black with no lights. Um, and I can't recollect right now if it, uh, if, if it had landing gears, but it was on the ground under these huge power lines. Um, it was just like under it, like almost like underneath it, but it, it was that small word. It, it, anyway, I tripped there, and that's why I was like, wow, and then I seen uh, what was crazy was, I don't remember if the door opened or what, but two, two little, mo two, I don't know what to say, how to say it, Two clean little ugly dudes just walked out. They came out. How should I say? They came out, walked on each side of the doorway, and just stood there. I blacked out again. So uh, the next thing I know is I'm walking in this craft, my eyes open. I'm walking in it. I duck down because it's small. So I had to get in it like I got down, squat down. I, I seriously, I acted like I did this a hundred times. I know I haven't, but um, you know, it was no problem. I just bent down, went, got down, squatted on one knee again. And as I came in, the two came in behind me. Never really saw them. I just knew they just came in behind me, closed up. And I instantly asked them, I said, well, where are we going? It, it, I wasn't even panicking. I wasn't. I don't know what the heck my reaction was like that for. But I asked him where they're taking me. Where are we going? And he, they tell me we're going to the moon. And I'm like, okay, not even tripping for some reason. <laughs> but uh, I, I don't know. At that time, I couldn't really react. But again, I'm speaking to him. So I, they told me behind the moon. And I asked them why. And they say Earth can't detect us on their radars from the from the uh, behind the moon. Um, I was like, okay. So I bent down again because it was small, dark, and I never saw him while I was talking to him. I uh, I was just talking to him, and uh, shit, we took off. It it wasn't as fast as instant, but it was quick. Uh, and as I was looking, like a little window opened or something, not open, but I could see through the, I could see through the craft or whatever. I don't know if it was a window or what, but it was weird. Anyway, I could see the Earth, and we as we left it, it got smaller, but it was still kind of big. But it got smaller, and then I, my stomach kind of went like. Uh, like a roller coaster or something, because the next thing I realized is the moon went by us. We passed up the moon, and this was 10, 10 9, 15 seconds. And then as we passed the moon, we made like a little U-turn. It went to the dark side, the black side of it, and shit, I blacked out. Let's see, back to the moon, I think this is true. So uh, again, I black out. 
um, things scared me and woke me up from these, uh, and then I started, uh, you know, realizing again, so, I don't know when it moved past us and we went behind the moon, that was it, I don't remember from then on until the next thing was, uh, I panicked again, I was in, I was in a funnel pool, it was just like, a, the only thing I could relate to it is a, a swimming pool, but not a swimming pool. It was a swimming pool made out of some kind of metal. It was metal, like shiny metal, slippery metal. But it was a V-shaped pool filled with, I say 20, 30 yards around. But anyway, it was deep and it was like 30 yards down. It was a V, a funnel pool, but there was no, a funnel has a hole at the bottom. This one didn't have a hole at the bottom. So it was like you could fill it up with gel. And this is what it was filled up with, uh, greenish black, not so thick gel, kind of like water, but not like water. Thick, almost like, uh, like jelly, jello like fruit jello and stuff like that. It was kind of like that, but not, I can't explain it. I didn't make it, I didn't take a sample of it, I don't know, I was just in it. And um, what's weird about this was, what woke me up was the people screaming. It was heck of people screaming. Uh, and I started to panic because I thought they knew what they were screaming about and I thought we were all in trouble. But we were all in this swimming pool kind of full, halfway filled with gel. And the gel made the metal of the V-shaped pool slippery. So if you had it all over your hands and you're trying to climb out, you just do no way. You're gonna sink to the bottom. So um, I'm sure that was the scary part. But I didn't realize that at that time. What it looked like to me was, the only way I can explain it, is if you got a uh, flat piece of metal, and you got a drill, like a drill bit, just a drill and at the tip, when you, and when you drill it in, you stop when you just get the tip in, and, make, and when you take it out, you know, you would see a little V, like a little, little thing, but make that at a grand, grand size, a huge, you know what I mean? And it was, and then if you put oil in it or something, and you do a human in it that big, you know, it would be so hard, you couldn't climb out. You're naked, you can't get out. I, I'm just trying to explain it, I'll, I'll just get on to the story. But anyway, I'm in this uh, pool full of job. And people screaming, there's like 15 other people in there with me, at least. And um, so I'm just trying myself before I panic. I try to figure what the heck's going on. I'm looking around. I want to know what's up. Uh, I'm, and no one's talking. They ain't telling me, watch out, do this, nothing. So I'm trying to figure this shit out for myself. So I, I see this one guy, a, a white dude, black hair, naked, climbing out. He was climbing out on all fours on, out of this big swimming pool. And I was like, first thing I say was, where the hell is he going? We're on the damn moon, and he's trying to escape. You know, I mean, I'm like, what the hell are you going to do? They want us here for a reason. I'm not telling them this, I'm thinking it. And, you know, I, I didn't know what the hell. Can you imagine trying to escape? And then what, what do you do as soon as you get out? where you can open the door or run out. It didn't make any sense to me. But anyway, I was just trying to deal with the situation. Anyway, he's climbing out right, he almost gets out. And uh, this green light beam or something just flashes and it's, it's, a, it's not like a bullet. It was a beam, it was like a long beam. And it hit him, it touched him, and, it, and he slipped back in. And he did it like two, three times. And then anyway, there was this lady that was uh, like neck deep in this shit. And her hair was all messed up. You could tell she's been in it and whatever. And she wasn't saying a word. She was looking straight in my eyes the whole time and just staying right by me. I didn't pay her any mind. I didn't care about her. I was that worried about my ass. I was worried about myself. 
but she was all on him, and she was just, I don't know, like I could do something for her. But I couldn't, I just remember her, and that was it. Anyway, so I'm trying to figure this shit out. So I get like one inch close to the, to the metal, because I'm halfway in, halfway out, I'm not moving, not nothing. I'm staying where I am, because I don't want to slip in there. So, well, well, when we get to this part though, at, at the same time, um, it's a dark place. I, you can see right around you, but you can't pretty much see anywhere else, you know. But anyway, they're, they're talking to me. They're telling me they want me to go under this stuff, this gel, and breathe it. They say, don't worry, I won't drown. Um, they say I can digest it. Um, I could survive off of it, and my waist will turn into the gel again. Uh, I can, I mean, basically, I won't drown. And there was people in there moving. They were all panicking, man. They were like, they weren't just like moving their arms. They were every, all four limbs was just moving. They were in there, but they were all on the bottom. So, but obviously they're alive, and they said you can breathe it, you can eat it, you can survive in there. And don't worry, man, I didn't want to believe him. I didn't trust him, I didn't give a damn. I wasn't going to do it voluntarily. So what I figured out, I put my face like one inch to this metal. And I was looking at it. Like it's hell, it looked rough. Like like rings, like it was big rings or something, but I don't know how to explain it. But anyway, I, uh, I got real close and I looked at it and I figured out that the gel, when you had the gel in between your fingers and the metal, you, and you touched it, you couldn't get a grip. You would slip in, you would slip back in. So what I did was I put my hands on the metal, sunk my hands, I sunk my hands under the gel, so, my, so there was no gel in between my, my hand and the metal. So I had a grip under the gel. So what I did, what I did then, because I was getting scared, was I, I went all the way under and I stuck my nose and my mouth up and only had those two part uh, sticking out of the gel so I could breathe. But they were still talking to me and telling me, don't be scared and all that stuff. And uh, so I just stayed there and that's pretty much the last thing I remember about that. I probably did go under, but like I said, Unconsciously, I didn't know. Yeah, later on, I started to think. You know, you only had like a minute to think about every situation I was in. The whole moon thing, the fucking uh, getting in a spaceship or whatever you find. But uh, I only had a minute to think about everything because the next minute something else crazy was usually going on. But I did get the sense that there was people that had been in that jail, in that pool or under that jail for years. Um, I just had that feeling that some of them had been there for a long, long time. Because um, you can live in that stuff. You don't have to ever get out. You know, it has everything you need, basically. You can breathe it, you can eat it, you can shit it out. You know what I mean? So that's just that on that topic. There's a bunch more on that topic if you want. We can talk about that later. But now the next thing I remember is um, I gotta explain this. This is crazy too. But man, I, I have one of my greatest fears on this planet is frogs. They scare me to death. Um, I'm scared of pit bulls and all that shit and stuff like that and spiders and tarantulas and snakes. But frogs are it for me. But that's just me. And some of some about it, I don't like it, but let me get to the story. Anyway, next thing I know, again, something startled me and woke me up from my, out of this, thank goodness, was uh grabbed me by my wrist and they were walking me somewhere and I did not like their hands touching me. Um, man, it was nasty. It was like a frog to me. It just reminded me of that. And it, man, I shook my hand back, I pulled back, and I got pissed. And I, the first thing I did was ball up my fist like I was gonna fight. 
I got mad and I was scared really, but I'm mad. And I, this is where I realized um, I'm talking to these things, these little, little being things. But not with my mouth at first I was, but they started to, we were talking through our minds. It was, I, the only way I could explain it is they knew what I was thinking and I knew what they were thinking. And uh, first thing I thought was, I was gonna punch him. I was gonna hit this one in the head, but I'm so scared of frogs that the last thing I want, last thing I want on me is the inside of a frog on me. So I knew if I punched him in the head, my head, my head was going right through his head. It was just looking like a soft, rotten melon, you know, like that soft. And I didn't want that shit on me, and I was scared of that. And well, I told him he knew I was punching. I was going to punch him. And he said if I did that, I would change the, I would change the world as I know it. So I didn't care. I was still balled up, and I was going to punch him, and I was scared. They just walk away. They just leave. And I'm like, man, I don't know where I'm at. I'm fucking naked. Uh, I, I'm going to fight these two little guys. Next thing, they come back with this tall dude. Well, tall. He was like a little bit taller than me. I'm five, five. Um, he comes in. He comes in. He's kind of dressed up, but he's ugly as hell. He's fucking... Uh, Man, they're just not human faces, man. And to me, this guy wasn't, that's for sure. And the other little, the other little guys, I wouldn't look at their face either, man. I would, I would not look at their face. I literally looked at the little guys' faces for a second. I got so startled, so scared, my stomach turned. I scared the, I scared the hell out of me, man, if I looked at them. So, I never looked at them again. If they were around, I would just like look down at the, at the ground, knowing where they're at, but looking down at the ground because I would not look at them. So basically, they brought this other guy over. Fuck it, man. this is crazy. Uh, so he brought the, they brought these two, they brought these guys in here, and they were like telling them they had trouble with me. And oh, oh man, I swear, if I would have hit them, they would have died instantly. And then wow, it would have been a mess and I don't know, he said something. He said I changed the world as I know it, whatever. But anyway, uh he brought this dude over, came over, as soon as he came by, he looks at the two and he says, This is the prophet. And they looked at me and walked away. So uh whatever he calls me a prophet. And I, we just start walking. And again, I'm not looking at him. I can tell he's right next to me, almost touching me, shoulder to shoulder. We're walking. Cool dude, cool whatever, man. I don't know what he was, but he was cool. He was a peaceful little dude, peaceful dude. Um, taller than me, he was dressed up in something. Didn't pay attention, didn't have time. I was worried about other shit. So. If you didn't trip off me not knowing what he was wearing and all that, and I wasn't going to look at his face either. I looked at it one time. I got the same reaction that I did when I looked at the other ones. I hated to say but they were ugly as hell, and I was scared of them. If I was scared of how they looked, I didn't like it. I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. So I looked down the ground the whole time, and uh, he starts to explain to me some things. Uh, of what's going on. He said, well, he want to do some uh, experiments. And uh, well, it's dark. It's kind of like a neon dark where you can see a ride around you. I don't know. Can't explain it. Not going to try. But we were walking, and he's telling me that they want to they wanna do some tests on me or something. And... Uh, I was kind of tripping off that. I was like, what do you mean? I have some medical stuff. And he said they won't hurt me at all. And I, I had to make a deal with him. What I told him was, you can do whatever you want to do to me. Don't touch me. Don't scare me. And he said, he said okay. So uh, I hook up with him later on. Next thing I know, 
shit, man. I'm laying on this something. Again, I hear people saying, I'm laying on this metal table shining. I didn't look. I didn't study nothing around me. I was just involved. It was happening. So I didn't have time to do all that stuff. I, couldn't, I can't tell you a lot of things like that. But I can tell you what happened. So, uh, they fucking, uh, I'm laying on this table. And they start taking some skin off my arm. It was like, uh, at the time, I thought it was a big old chunk of meat because I can't understand at this time that they can do this, you know. The only thing that I can imagine, you know, they had this little knife thing, they made a square, and they peeled off it. But it wasn't even like nothing. It was like, you couldn't even see what they took off my skin. But it was some kind of skin sample. Then the next thing I know, and I wake up, and they're taking my right eyeball out. They, uh, didn't hurt, did not hurt, didn't scare me, they promised me, they wouldn't touch me, so I'm, I'm going with it, they're, they're doing it, I didn't know they were going to do that, but, uh, they, uh, as I said, they, they took it out, there's like a little vein or a cord or some kind of nasty shit behind your eye, because I saw it with my left eye, and with my left eye, I saw him put in a little BB. It looked just like a little BB, but small. It was like on the tip of a needle or something. And they put it behind my eye and put my eyeball back in. No pain whatsoever. And uh, I asked them, what, what the hell is this for? And they said, so we can monitor you. And they were like, so we can monitor you. And I said, okay, and I, I instantly thought that it's like a video camera. They can see everything I can see as far as I thought. But it, as far as I know, it wasn't just so they could find me or something like that. I don't know. I have no clue. Again, I don't know. But it was supposed to be some kind of dissolving thing or something. Whatever. I've never had an x-ray or nothing like that, so I really don't know. And they, they said, uh, they said they won't check behind my eyeball. No doctor would take my eyeball out to go see if there's something behind it or whatever. Whatever, and of course I'm not going to go to the doctor and say some, some damn aliens put a BB behind my eye. Can you check on it? You know, that's, that's going to be more embarrassing. But, uh, they did that, and then, fuck, I hate this part. People always say this. They try to make fun of you and me. I mean, me. Uh, I'm talking about an, uh, anal probes and shit like that. And I'm like, I never, ever, ever had that experience. Never seen it. I had worse. They took semen from me uh, the, the, the hard way. You know what I mean? It wasn't pleasant at all. I'm nothing cool about it. Uh, but it did hurt. Didn't hurt. They didn't scare me as shit, but they were telling me what they were doing. So in my mind, I'm thinking they straight cutting off my testicle or my right testicle, and they're taking it out like that. That's what in my mind I was thinking, because it was so nasty. I didn't want to watch this one. But as far as I know, that's how they did it. They cut it off and took it. So shit, that blew me away. I was done. They actually went through the, the top, went in, took it out that way. I realized that years later. But, uh, terrible, terrible thing. Shit. Anal, anal probes will be better. Uh, anyway, I asked him about that. I was like, well, what's, why? Why are you doing that? And he said, well, we're going to make babies in space. He said, pure humans. Um, Individually, they might scare the shit out of us. Um, I think, yeah, that was basically the end of that uh, that examination, or whatever you want to call it. Um, the next thing I remember was uh, walking down the hallway again with that guy. I don't remember his name. I don't even know if I got his name. But he kept calling me the prophet. These are the parts I still get visions back now. I remember.
still throughout my life. I remember stuff. Not I remember all, everything from this part. Oh, this part's a lot sketchy. But I do, because I cut out a lot. I blacked out a lot. First thing I asked them was about taking my semen and about the babies in space. I don't know if I should get into why they do it, but he just says they make perfect humans in space. Pure humans is what they're calling them. You want to hit me back about it? You want to know why? Why they doing it? I can answer that for you. I can do something. More I'll let you know. But anyway, as we're walking, like I said, they know things before you, uh, they know things before it happens in a way. Like when I'm talking, when I'm talking about the humans, and as we're talking about the humans, we walk into this room where there's two kids, the two human Caucasian white kids, and they're sitting on this like a desk or something with their back facing me, but the desk is like on a wall. It's not on a wall. I don't want to say it was round two. But I don't, I, like I said, I didn't study everything around me at the time. I'm trying to see what's going on with these guys. So it was a boy and a girl, probably under 15 years old. I don't remember what color of hair, like brown, blonde, whatever. But they're, they both kind of like turned in. The, the chair kind of like moved and they looked at me eye to eye. And as we were talking about the humans in space, he showed me them. They were in the building we were at, or whatever the hell we were in, and they were there. And they were actually doing things. They were like in control of something. I don't know if it was a, a, what we were riding in or was it something. They were doing something. And they turned around and got busy and just kept doing what they were doing. I, uh, we didn't talk or nothing. They didn't, we didn't acknowledge each other. I kind of like nod my head. We didn't really talk through our brains like everybody else, like the other guys up there. It was just basically just showing me them. And I was tripping. I was like, wow, these are two little, these are little kids. And they weren't like, I would think if you were a hostage or something and you haven't, you haven't seen anybody and all of a sudden somebody walks up that's like you, I would think you would run up. I would think they would have ran up to me and asked for help and begged me for help. But they didn't. So I instantly figured they were comfortable. They didn't, they weren't worried. But uh, they were two humans born in space, not on Earth. And they couldn't have been born too long, too long ago because they were young. And I was amazed they were in control of some huge shit like that. Uh, I was like, whatever, wow. Okay, they were dead, they weren't hostage. this. And in my mind, while I'm, while I'm, uh, I'm soaking all this in. I'm thinking, how how do they survive? You know, what are they eating? What are they doing and stuff? And this is crazy. Uh, again, he knows what I'm thinking and what I'm talking about. So he shows me, we walk into this other room where there's a fucking cow like in the air, float, floating in the fucking air, hanging on, not floating, hanging on something, but no, it's not hanging from nothing. You know, it's just in the air. Obviously, it's like it's hanging from something, but it's not. And man, my stomach turned again. I'm like, wow. Because cows can weigh tons, man. And I didn't know how the hell they were doing this shit. Anyway, fuck, I couldn't trip off that shit too long. So. I, I look down, and there's like a little, another little square swimming pool, and they dip the cow in it. And when the cow came up, he he was like nothing. His stomach was open. He was like dead. They like took something from his ass, some man, and he was dead. I guess he didn't move. He didn't move. He didn't do anything. Uh, he explained to me what this was. Uh, they make cows in space too. They uh, uh, take the same thing, the reproduction organs, and they create pure cows. No fleas, no nothing. They're brand new, good. And I don't know how they feed them. I don't know all that shit, but I didn't, I didn't understand what they were talking about. So then they started explaining to me about the humans in space. He broke it down and told me. Uh, he said, 
what a baby he was drinking. And he just said, milk. And he just kept going on. He said, yes. I said, what do you eat as a, uh, what do you humans eat as an adult? Uh, meat and food and stuff. And he was like, yes. And then he basically stopped on that topic. And I'm like, I can't trip again. I'm tripping. I'm like, why? Well, I can't really see these guys flipping burgers and doing whatever. I don't. I don't understand it, man. But he told me. So I went with it, whatever, man. That's what he said. The next thing I remember is uh, opening my eyes in my bed, and uh, uh, my alarm clock went off like 30 seconds after I woke up, and I was feeling all my testicles because I thought they took one of my testicles. Oh, my heart would not stop beating. It was just, I mean, beating hard and fast because I thought they took my testicle. And they did it. And then I was starting to realize things. And right after it happens, I hardly remember anything. It was throughout the years what happened. So that's what happened with that the story. And then there's a whole other story about remembering it. You know, I mean, uh, the first time I remembered my story, was when I was walking down my my uh, street by my apartments. I was having like a little birthday party, and my cousin wanted to go to the store, and I was going to drive, and he started laughing at me. He said, let's walk. So I started walking, and as we were walking, the dog started barking at us, and I got like a movie in my head. It was just everything hit me. And then from then on, 20 years later, I'm still remembering. Um, they told me, they told me the past, the present, and the future. Um, they downloaded it into me like a computer. Um, I can't speak on everything uh, because some of the things don't have words. Met up with the second being, you know, the second type of being like that, yeah. Yeah. taller guy. The first thing I asked him was about that. When he told me about pure humans that make, I call them backup humans. But they call them like perfect humans, pure humans. Um, pure humans made in space is what they told me. I don't know how they do it, but I don't see how they would do it if they were taking like my semen as a, a female's eggs. I don't know what they do from that process. Or, um, you know, they sure didn't, they sure didn't make me uh, have sex with another human. Um, that probably would have been easier and a funner way to, to take my semen. That's, that's one thing that really bothered me was when they took my semen. Uh, I'd never think about it. That's out of the whole abduction thing. That's the one thing I don't think about because it would be pretty fucked up if they took semen and half my children up there or, or whoever's children or whatever. Or I don't know. It's a... Uh, their explanations are so simple. Most of their explanations are simple for everything. Even the way they fly, uh, uh, you know, just everything's so, so simple. It's not really high. It is high tech, but what they also told me was they're not really smarter than us. They're just old. They're just old. You know, like they've been around for eons and millions of years or whatever. I mean, we never get to. Uh, get to that level, and I truly believe that we are smarter than we are, we're just not older, and could give us two million years under our belt, you know what I mean, it's, it's so true, we are the smart, we are smart, we can do anything we want, I'm trying, trying, I'm trying to deal with it, we, let's just get it, be, be known that this has happened, this is really, really happening, and it has happened to somebody that, uh, somebody that's not mine, man, I'm, I'm being real about this.